confession time. We had a, a, a bit of a, a schedule shuffle a couple weeks back, and I was placed on today, of which I rec- realized this morning. So, and I work today. So we, we uh, I have, I think the Lord has given me a bit to share with you guys, but I apologize if it's um, a little anemic today, but we, God, God can use his word. Uh, for sure. So let's uh, let's begin to read chapter eight. I'm going to read the whole. I'm going to start actually, actually with seven twenty seven and read through the chapter. Blessed be the Lord God our fathers, who has put such a thing as this in the king's heart to beautify the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem, and has extended mercy to me before the king and his counselors, and before all the king's mighty princes. So so I was encouraged as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me, and I gathered leading men of Israel to go up with me. Of course, this is, this is Ezra. Now, he, if you've noticed the pronouns, he's changed to me and I and we and those. So this is, this is who's written this book, and it's changed to now this is no longer writing of history now that it's, this is present time as far as he's concerned of what's what's going on. These are the, the heads of their father's houses, and this is the genealogy of those who went up with me from Babylon in, in the reign of King Artaxerxes. Of the sons of Phineas, Gershon, the sons of Ithamar, Daniel, of the sons of David, Hatus, Hatush, sorry, of the sons of Shechaniah, the sons of Parash, Zechariah, the registered and registered with him were 150 males. Of the, of the sons of Pahath, Moab, Elahone, son of Zerahiah, and with him 200 males. Of the sons of Shechaniah, Ben Jahaziel, and with him 300 males. Of the sons of Adin, Ebed, the son of Jonathan, and with him fifty males of the sons of Elam, Jeshaiah, the son of Athaliah, and with him seventy males of the sons of Shephatiah, Zebediah, the son of Michal, and with him eighty males of the sons of Joab, Obadiah, the son of Jehiel, and with him two hundred and eighteen males of the sons of Shilomith, Ben Joph. Josephiah, and with him 160 males. Of the sons of Babai, Zechariah, the sons of Babai, and with him 28 males. Of the sons of Azgad, Jahanan, the son of Hakatan, and with him 110 males. And of the last sons of Adonakam, whose names are these, Elaphethah, Ella Fithlet, Jael, Shemaiah, and with them sixty males. Also of the sons of Bigva, Uthay, Zubbud, and with them seventy males. Whoo! Now I gathered them by the river that flows through Ahavah, uh, uh, ah, and we camped there three days. And I looked among the people and the priests, and I found none of the sons of Levi's there, Levi there. Then I sent for Eleazar and Ariel and Shemaiah and el Nathan and Jarib and el Nath- el Nathan, Nathan, Zechariah, Mishalam, leaders also for... Joy Arib and Elnathan, men of understanding. I gave them a command for Edo, the chief man at the at the place Casaphia, and told them that they should what they should say to Edo and his brethren, the Nethanim, at the at the place Casaphia, that they should bring us servants for the house of our God. Then by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding, of the sons of Mali, the son of Levi, the son of Israel, namely Sherebiah with his sons and brothers, 18 men, and Hashabiah, 
with him Jeshiah of the sons of Merari, his brothers and their sons, twenty men, and also of the Nethanim, whom David and the leaders had appointed for the service of the Levites, two hundred and twenty Nethanim, all of whom were designated by name. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, and we that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. For I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road because we had spoken to the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him, but his power and his wrath or against all those who forsake him. So we fasted and entreated our God for this, and he answered our prayer. And I separated twelve of the leaders of the priests, Sherebiah, Hashabiah, and ten of their brethren with them, and weighed out to them the silver and, and the gold and the articles and the offerings of the house of our God, which the king and his counselors and his princes and all Israel who were present had offered. So I weighed into their hands six hundred and fifty talents of silver, Silver articles weighing 100 talents, 100 talents of gold, 20 gold basins worth a thousand drachmas, two vessels of fine polished bronze, precious as gold. And I said to them, you are holy to the Lord. The articles are holy also, and the silver and the gold are a free will offering to the Lord God of your fathers. Watch and keep them until you weigh them before the leaders of the priests and the Levites and the heads of the fathers of the house of Israel in Jerusalem in the chambers of the house of the Lord. So the priests and the Levites received the silver and the gold and the articles by weight to bring them to Jerusalem, to the house of our God. Then we departed from the river of Ahava on the twelfth day of the first month to go to Jerusalem. And the hand of our God was upon us, and he delivered us from the hand of the enemy and from the ambush along the road. So we came to Jerusalem and stayed there three days. Now on the fourth day, the silver and the gold and the articles were weighed in the house of our God by the hand of Merimoth, the son of Uriah, the priest. And with him was Eleazar, the son of Phinehas, and with them were the Levites, Jazabad, the son of Jeshua, and Noada, the son of Benui, and the, with the number and the weight of everything, all the weight was written down at that time. The children of those who had been carried away captive, who had come from the captivity, offered burnt offerings to the God of Israel, twelve bulls for all Israel, ninety-six rams, twenty-seven lambs, and twelve male goats as a sin offering. All this was a burnt offering to the Lord. And they delivered the king's orders to the king's satraps and the governors in the region beyond the river. So they gave support to the people and the house of God. Let's just pray one more time. Lord, we love you. Again, we we ask you, Lord, to bless this time. Uh, Lord, that you would encourage us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So in Ezra 7.13... In the letter from the king Artaxerxes, king of kings, as he described himself, I issue a decree that all those of the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites, <laughs> circle there, and the priests and the Levites in my realm who volunteer to go up to Jerusalem may go with you. So then we read down through this list that I'm not going to read again, of all those who came, and we get to 15. Now I gathered them by the river that flows to Ahava, and we camped there three days. And I looked among the people and the priests and found none of the sons of Levi. And I thought that was a... That was an interesting thing. They were, they, they were, they were told by Artaxerxes to take many things, take, the, take people who would volunteer, take the gold, take the silver, take, some, take salt, the temple articles, the oil, the wine. We, we see up here in 7, 
7, some of the children of Israel, the priests, the Levites, the singers, gatekeepers, Nethanim, came up to Jerusalem in the seventh year of the king Artaxerxes. And so these are, they, they were aware of what's going on. They were aware of this decree. They were aware of what was going on, and, and they were not there. The, the, um, the children of Levi didn't show. And they, the children of Levi, as you, Pastor David has mentioned many times in, 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 in Israel to serve in the house of the Lord, you know, you had to be a Levi of, you know, and, uh, of, the, of the house of, of Aaron to, be, to serve even you know, as, as a high priest. And so you had, there, there were some specific things that you had, to, you had to be. And so they were designated by the Lord, the Levites, to serve in the house, in the house of the Lord, to serve him, to lead others in, in worship. And, and they did not uh, show up. In this voluntary movement, and and it, you know, for me, it jumped out and just as as where am I? Where am I? Am I among the people who is choosing to serve? And I'm, am I among the people that stands up in the volunteer? Lord, I'll go. I'll I'll come with you. I'll do what needs to be done. Or do I hang back and do I wait for somebody else to step up and do it? Or somebody else might take take the danger. I'll I'll step up when it you know when it suits me. We don't. We don't know all the, all the details here, but it, but not a single outside of Ezra, who was the leader of this, not a single Levite showed up. The Levites who were to lead, where are we in our in our uh, leadership in this country? Are we as believers standing up and speaking the truth? Are we leading? This is a this is a country, this is a people. Are we leading our people, or are we? Eh, as, as those who are called by God um, out of the rest, just like the Levites were called by God out of the rest, are we leading our people in, in spiritual matters? Are we, are we shirking that duty? Now, this is a question every bit for me as it is for anybody else. It's just what the Lord was, was speaking to me when I read that. Um. Said again. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna read verse one through fifteen again. It's just, <laughs> just too many. But but interesting thing as I as I I listened a little bit today to uh, Pastor David's um, teaching of Ezra eight when it, when he brought it up. It was actually in this teaching that he uh, he first kind of announced, which is not the right word, but kind of started talking about the seven passions. Um, and talking about the, the, this need of of us to evaluate ourselves, or of us to sit back and say, you know, uh, am I am I am I doing these things that need that should that should that a believer who is trying to mature, who is trying to follow the Lord, who's trying to be effective, trying to be stable, that's trying, you know, these, these things. Am I doing these things? And I'm just gonna I'm gonna share them. And um, let's think about it. Jot, jot down any maybe that you feel like, you know what, I've kind of stepped away. I've, I've taken my hand from the plow in this area of my life, and maybe I should, uh, should do a little better. Maybe I should uh, seek forgiveness and, and work in that area again. Giving. Reading and studying God's Word. And those being uh, two sides of the same thing, but reading is like your devotional, where you sit down and you're just kind of spending time with the Lord and His Word, and, and and then studying is sitting down and digging in. Are you really spending time? Like, yeah, you know what? I had a my, my my son had a question about this. Let me dig in and figure out a real good answer, not just well, the Bible says so. You know, do I really dig in? I've, the Lord, you know, I had a question about this. Do I dig in or do I just kind of let that question, yeah. 
and it's you know that, that studying is you know being honest that's a that's an area that that jumped out at me is man I'm really have been lax at that lately praying are you spending time not just talking to the Lord are you spending time hearing from the Lord are you spending time in silence uh, just waiting to hear from him praying obviously talking is a, talking is a two way street fellowship and family are you spending time in fellowship are you, are you making time to, to pour into your family your family is that first ministry we can make lots of excuses of why we can't serve our family and take care of them or you can do it <laughs> and that is out of that should be the pouring into the, the broader family of the church and, and, and the broader family of the community but if, if your wife is not well taken care of your kids are not going to be well taken care of the church is not going to be well taken care of and so we, we need to make sure that we're actively pouring into our wife actively seeking fellowship and, and you know fellowship here is also going to be in the sense of brothers and sisters who are you know for in our case other brothers who are doing well in the Lord are you spend are you seeking them out you know letting them talk speak into your life spending time with them just sometimes it's just refreshing to spend time with brothers you know and be encouraged I get to spend time with Mike some you know sometimes just piddling at his office or whatever and he's helping me with things and it's just a blessing I'm always encouraged by Mike every time I talk to him that's just a blessing are you spending that time with people worship are you you know spending time actually worshiping the Lord doesn't have to be with music I think the Lord kind of designed and built music to put us in a place of, of you know worshiping him but ultimately life is worship Evangelism and discipleship. When was the last time you were intentionally doing something to reach the lost? Intentionally doing something to build a less mature brother or, or sister up? It takes intentionality because, you know, if you're not intentional about it, I find it myself, I'll. I'll make a million excuses why now is not the right time to do blah 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 with you know and so it's, it takes intentionality serving are you serving the Lord and I'm you know again this was <laughs> this is every bit for me is is maybe you so just think of the things that the Lord Lord kind of brought up you know what you need to don't forget about that Life lesson, God has called us as men, as leaders, to lead our people not to be dragged along by the world, unwilling to serve Jesus and do the right thing because we are comfortable in our circumstances. That's a long one. But God has called us as men, as leaders, to lead our people not to be dragged along by the world, unwilling to serve Jesus and to do the right thing because we are comfortable in our circumstances. It is very easy to be comfortable in our circumstances where we live. Very easy to be comfortable. Verse 16 and 17. Then I sent for Eleazar, and this is com coming right after the we were there at the river, and I noticed there were no Levites, the people who are supposed to lead us spiritually. And then I sent for Eleazar, Ariel, Shemaiah, El Nathan, Jerib, El Nathan, Nathan, Zechariah, Me Shalom, Me Shulam, excuse me, leaders. Also for Jerib, El Nathan, men of understanding. And I gave them a command for Edo, the chief man at the place Casaphia. And I told them what they should say to Edo and his brethren, the Nethanim at the palace, Casaphia, that they should bring us servants for the house of our Lord. 
this is the you know, encouragement I got out of this it, is that you know we should be encouraging one another to when, when we when we see each other not not doing what we should for the Lord not doing not serving not giving not whatever this, this is a you know, we're not you know let me sin sniffers let me find something in you you're not doing right that I, I might be doing that you're not doing so I can whack you that's not the point the point is though is it's if you have ever been called out by somebody in an area that you know you are sinning in you feel loved you really do if you if you take it uh, maturely and you respond the end result of that is man that dude loves me that dude loves me enough to have called me out for my good and this this is what he's doing here he's, he's going okay all right everybody stop the caravan we gotta we gotta call out some brothers call them to to what they have been called to do and so don't be don't be afraid to do that not not in if you're setting yourself up as in judgment to somebody but if, it's, if your heart is to help someone if your heart is to encourage them in the Lord, don't be afraid to encourage them. Don't be afraid. They will feel loved, and you will have loved, loved them. Don't be afraid. Um, verse 18, Then by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding of the sons of of Mali, the son of Levi, the son of Israel, namely Sherebiah, with his sons, brothers, 18 men, and Hashabiah, and, and with him Jeshiah, the sons of Merari, his brothers, and their sons, 20 men, also of the Nethanim, who David, the leaders, David and the leaders had appointed for the service of the Levites, 220 Nethanim, all of them were designated by name. Got about 260, 40 Levites and 220 Nethanim uh, for the service in the kingdom off of that call. And, and notice what he says here, Ezra. Then, by the good hand of our God upon us. What happened? Ezra took an action, sent people to go say, you should come. We already asked for volunteers. You didn't send any. We need you to be here. We need you. And he didn't then, well, I called these guys and they finally came. He said, by the good hand of our God. He didn't take credit for their response. They had, the, they had a good response. They got some good guys. But he didn't take credit for it. And I, and, and I often you know, remember the temptation that, that I have, that, that we have as people of taking a little bit of credit for what God has done. Well, I had a conversation with so-and-so about giving, and he started giving. I talked him into it. What, you know, whatever, you know, we, and we can be a little more sly about it in that I was, I prayed for so-and-so, and they, the Lord healed them. The Lord healed them, or, or you're just kind of taking a little pat for that prayer. You're, you're, you're a, a powerful man of prayer. And yes, God uses our prayer, but we need to be really careful in that bit of sliding in there. Look what I did. I'm not sure God helped, but I prayed. I talked to him. I got the result. That, and I, I just love how he, he brought that out. Then by the good hand of our God, he didn't say, he didn't say anything about himself. Any, 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 any congratulations to himself, he said, he, he called he called them and then he said God to God be the glory these people responded and I think that's important life lesson God, give God the glory don't pay your don't pat yourself on the back when someone responds to the call of serving Jesus whether it be the gospel when somebody responded well I shared the gospel with them or whether it be just correcting somebody in love or praying for somebody or always might even be best just to leave yourself out of it altogether even you know because it's just it's too it's so easy for us to step in and to 
take just a little bit of glory for ourselves. I know, that's what people say. I don't do that. But. Okay, verse 19. I'm going about to 21 here. Verse 20, then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, and we, that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and our possessions. I'm not going to get into it tonight, but, but Ezra had kind of made a bold claim God's going to take care of us. God, God's got good for us and bad for the people who don't don't love us or don't don't, don't love Him, and and so He kind of went out in faith. A big boom. God's going to do this, and now He's taking. Ooh, whoo! I uh, hope He does this, and so He. <laughs> you read you read that. That's kind of what this is. He's, he's like, man, I hope I hope I didn't stick my foot in my mouth, but but you know what we're going to do? We're going to stop. He doesn't know how, doesn't necessarily know which way to go, how they're going to get there, how they're going to be protected. I don't want to ask the king because I already said this thing that God will protect us. Let's pray. <laughs> Has it come to that? Let's pray. <laughs> so, you know, a couple things I just wanted to mention on this is the. Um, There should, there should be some care, and I'm not saying he did or didn't, but there should be some care that we don't make our own plans and statements and then invite, invite God along for the ride. You know, we should be seeking God in the front end of doing things, not in the, uh-oh, Lord, help this work. You know, we should be, Lord, help this work. I'm not saying that, and I'm not saying he did that. But that this was kind of comes to mind for me is just a just a, a, a warning and a reminder for us that you know, we should be seeking God in the in the plan making in this in each step in in as we go and you know the Lord was faithful and they and they he led them to humble themselves that was the first thing and that's a big thing you know he this is Ezra leading a big big group of people a big a big man in the in the kingdom. We need to humble humble ourselves, God. Let, guys, let's let's first do that. I don't know where we're going. I don't know how we're going to get there. I don't know how we're going to survive possible raids. That was a very common thing back in that day. That you're out on the highways and byways, and you're gonna, you're going to be in trouble. They had a pretty pretty big group, but they didn't really have soldiers. So how did, how were they going to get there? They didn't know until they sought the Lord. I'm going to leave the last life lesson here. Leading is rarely about knowing where you are going or how you're going to get there. It is often humbling yourselves and encouraging others to do the same and then following wherever he may lead. Leading is rarely about knowing where you are going or how you're going to get there. It is often humbling yourself and encouraging others to do the same. Then follow wherever he Jesus may lead. I will end there tonight.